favorite type of uh -huh, Trader Joe's. When I knew, what's the percentage? 72%, at least 70 if you're going to get it. Get those antioxidants in. And I just take, you come to my house, I'll have a jar with little pieces. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see some of the people coming in. Here, can you get, I guess, a note card too? Thank you. Okay, I think I'm recording. All right, and I, the question for the people in the chat is, what is your biggest tip your, or your best tip um, being plant-based? What's something that you found that's really helpful? That's very sweet. Thank you. So I guess we're going to get started. Um, maybe I should go right here. Where should I go? I'm Sally Lipsky, if you don't know me. And um, I leave plant-based Pittsburgh along with three other dynamic plant-based Pittsburgh board members here who will be teaching you today. Linda Jones, Hello. cook extraordinaire. Hello. Brittany Gerudi, cook extraordinaire and recipe developer extraordinaire. Oh, Susan Greenberg is back there. So you're gonna, she's gonna talk about these little mini muffins and you'll be getting the recipes tomorrow. Um, I will be sending out the email with the recording from today, the power, there's some things on the PowerPoint that we'll use as we go along, maybe or maybe not. All that information, plus the recipes, you'll get everything in that tomorrow. So if you don't wanna watch the Super Bowl because it's boring, this is where you're going to go tomorrow, okay? So with that, and there's some handouts I'll go over, but those, in Zoom, but those in person, I just brought some handouts too that will let you explore at the end. Um, so, and some taste testing. I'm sorry, Zoom people, you're really at a disadvantage because <laughs> those in person get the beauty of the tasting. So I'm going to hand it, Linda, you're, you're going yeah. to start. So this is Linda Jones, who is going to start our presentation so thank you linda for being everything you do here every month the last three months i've said that it's so nice to be in person oh hello so um i want to mention my recipes are back there on a one sheet paper front and back so if you want to pick those up and don't want to wait until tomorrow my it's one recipe today so we're revitalizing whole foods plant-based. And if I had to guess, most of us here in the last six weeks have heard or seen a reference to nutrition, food in the new year, weight loss, um, health, um, something like that. I know I have. So I was shopping, doing my grocery shopping, and I happened to pick up um, the most recent Forks Over Knives magazine, which I have several of. And I opened it up, boom, page two, refresh and renew. So this, this really spoke to me because the last few months, November, December, my whole food plant-based journey has kind of been not straight and narrow. It's, I've, I've veered off course. So it was kind of a wake-up call for me to kind of regroup and think what I had to do and what I needed to do. So, I want to read it to you. It's just five sentences. It's basic, but um, it's written by Brian uh, Wendell, the um, CEO of Forks Over Nuts. And as I said, it's called Refresh and Renew. The new year is a great time to renew your commitment to healthy eating habits. While some find the prospect daunting, we like to view it through a very simple lens. Eat within the categories of fruits, vegetables, tubers, whole grains and legumes, loading up on the foods you enjoy most. Focus less on single nutrients and on finding healthy meals that you love. So that's pretty basic. Whether you're here as a beginner or thinking about starting whole food plant-based or vegan, 
or whether you've been doing this for years and years like like we have um, it, it's a good template to tell us and show us what to do so as i said i was not so much on a straight and narrow path i called myself a lazy vegan i was getting more processed food than i wanted to have so this helped me um, so besides eating from those groups the second thing that brian said was eating the foods you love if you don't like broccoli don't eat broccoli and if you stick with us you never have to worry about any recipes or any suggestions because we have Brittany, Brittany Giroudi, who has two e-cookbooks and i'm sure there's more in the future she has a youtube channel um is it the new Giroudi family.com or mm -hmm. the new Giroudi family.com you have to check it out check her out wonderful wonderful i don't know how or where she got it but Brittany has a magic spoon that she just waves and she creates recipes and voila and she redoes the oldies of goodies recipes that we love jello pretzel salad from years ago with cool whip oh. <laughs> Brittany has redone it and so there's old recipes the family recipes she finds a way to make them and they're just they're delicious and they're nutritious and they satisfy you so Brian mentioned those couple of things, but I have to mention a third component that I think is important. And that's to educate yourself or re-educate yourself. There's a ton of food information out there and it gets confusing, keto, this, that, it, it just, it can be overwhelming unless you have a background in nutrition, which, which none of us do, we don't have degrees in that. But I have to suggest to you to focus and look at evidence-based information. I rely on the professionals. Uh, Dr. Michael Greger, nutritionfacts.org is a wonderful website. Um, Dr. McDougall, Dr. Esselstyn, I've read Dr. Furman, the Campbell family. So there's a lot of people out there that, that can help you and steer you in the right direction. That's key. So when I was kind of doing some self evaluation, I thought I don't eat enough grains. There are not enough grains in my diet, which are so important. So I decided to demonstrate for you today a grain and green salad. I don't have a specific name for it because it's so versatile. You can put in just about any grain you want. You can put in about any um, green that you want as long as you can eat it. It doesn't have to be cooked. Why so, are grains so important, Linda? Well, <laughs> this is what I found out. I educated myself. Thank you. We didn't, even, planted question. we didn't even plan that. This is like <laughs> wonderful, Sally. We're like, <laughs> um, so reading, reading uh, on this, I found that of all the groups that Brian mentioned, the, the fruits, the vegetables, the tubers, the legumes, um, grains, the two powerhouses, since we're in the Olympics, the two gold medal winners for fiber, and we're always talking about eating more fiber, are legumes or beans and grains. I did not know that. And I've been doing this for like, seven, I've been doing this seven years. So the grains are really good and um, legumes for, for fiber. Now, speaking about fiber, before we jump into this, um, it's best if you can to stick with whole grains. Like if you look on a label, if the first ingredient or two is whole wheat or whole oats. And the reason why, if they're not, if it's further down on the list, that means they're processed. And between 70 and 90% of the vitamins and the minerals and the nutrients and the fiber are gone once it's processed. So if you can stick to whole grains and um, when you're shopping. Um, so let's get started. As I said, we're gonna put in, I chose kale first. You can make this with spinach. Uh, you can make it with other grains as long as they can be eaten raw. So I chose some purple kale and also some green kale just to make it look pretty. So that's will go that'll go into the bowl. Um, I was making a lot for your samples to take home. That's our take home table back there. So I was making a lot. So I pulsed the kale into the food processor, but you don't have to. You can just rip it apart. You can cut it. I found out no stems. Um, kale stems can be baked or broiled or braised or steamed. You don't want to eat them raw. There's some chemical reaction, medical reaction. You don't want to eat the stems raw. Um, so I have have this right here. Oops. 
also I was at Baldi's and I found, um, I don't go there that often, it's not near me, but I was there and I found a bag of kale, organic kale, chopped kale ready to go. So that was great. Okay, the next thing we're gonna put in is farro, which is an ancient grain. Here's what it looks like. Now, this can be made, your grains, it has to be pre-cooked for the salad. So you know that. It can be made in water or I made it in a low sodium vegetable broth, which is great. Um, and it looks a lot, I, did, I didn't even really, I've only had made it once before or used it once before. So it kind of looks like a sunflower seed. And then when you cook it, it, it um, puffs up, of course. So this is my grain. And this salad is very versatile. I try to go for half grains, half greens, but you can make more grains. You can have less grains or less greens, whatever you want to do for tailor making. And as I say, vary the green and you can vary the grain. That's one of my favorite grains because it's nice and chewy. Yeah. Yeah. It's chewy. It's kind of like it. rice. Um, and rice. yeah, it's I similar to rice. This, I used to make this with quinoa a lot, but mm -hmm. I think farro has taken over. So it's it's pretty with the grains in it and the, um, the greens. I took a cooking class last week and they taught tabbouleh, if you've ever had tabbouleh. I was kind of surprised. It's mostly greens and just a little bit of bulgur wheat, just three tablespoons. And that wasn't appealing to me. So I like for this, especially if you're going to use that, and I would use this a big portion for a meal. Um, I like more, more grains and the greens. And this is a dish that you can make and it lasts in the fridge five or six days. It's wonderful. It's a great grab and go for lunch. You know, if you go out to work and you want to um, take it for lunch. I've also added chickpeas in it, rinse and drain chickpeas, throw it in there too. Um, next, we're going to put in dates. And as I say, as far as amounts go, it's up to you. If you like a more sweet salad, which I do, I definitely have a sweet tooth. And this satisfies me. So after I eat something like this, or I don't go for looking for a cookie at eight o'clock at night because because <laughs> I've had my sweets. So we put some chopped dates in here. Look how many I chopped. <laughs> I, think, I think I over chopped for the day. Um, so we put that in. And it goes together pretty quickly too. You know, I like to make foods that work for me. In other words, if I make this salad and I have it for two or three days and then I think, oh, I'm tired of this, um, I would get a wrap. I love these wraps. I would get a wrap, spread some hummus on it and put this in the wrap and roll it up. And there you have a um, salad sandwich, a wrap. So that's very good to do. Or in the spring or summer when we have better tasting tomatoes, um, scoop out a tomato and fill, fill this full of tomato with this. That looks nice. Or if you're into grain bowls and you only have a little bit of the salad left, put this in the grain bowl with some other vegetables um, and a dressing on top and that could be another meal for you. So as I say, make your food work for you. You could even put it in a soup base. That's what I do. Yeah. I take like a just because I want the warmth. Yeah. So I generally eat this cold or at room temperature. I've never warmed it, um, but I'm sure you could. Okay. So we have the we have the farro. We have the um, kale. We have the dates. Let's put in garlic. Someone asked, "What wrap did you use?" I use the Ezekiel wrap. Um, that your husband's? Yes. <laughs> oh, you're going to be tasting when you take home something that Brittany's giving you to take home. I, we made some, um, I call them chips, little scoopers back there for you to take home made out of these. They, they're circular, but my husband cuts them into triangles, puts them on a cookie sheet, um, and bakes them in the oven like 400 degrees, four minutes on each side. And leave it out in an leave them out in an open container, and they, they're nice and crunchy and crispy, and they're great. So I use these a lot. Today we made a different shape, but um, 
I recommend them highly. And um, they're they're in the refrigerated section usually, yes, right? I, I can show them these didn't food co up. A Giant lot. Eagle has them. I, or does Giant Eagle have that brand? I don't know. I think sometimes, depending on which Giant Eagle. So they come like 10 or 12 in a pack. So if you're only going to use one or two when it you bring it home, put some parchment paper in between. Um, put it back in the freezer and then you can just take them out as you need them. Yeah, East End Food Co op definitely has them. Yeah. So I like these a lot. Okay, so we have three components so far. Let's put in some green onions, or it's going to do garlic. You can do green onions. And the Ezekiel brand, like you can get bread. They have hamburger buns if you go to the co op. Um, they have a bunch of different ones. They also even have hot dog buns, which I haven't been able to find anywhere, really though. Find. Yeah. yeah okay, so we just put in the green onions. Here comes the garlic that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Oh, too bad Zoom, you don't have smell-o-vision. <laughs> it's really good here. A little more garlic. We'll walk over and show them. I never met garlic I didn't like. I love garlic. Okay, so oh, nuts. You may put nuts in or you don't have to put nuts in. I have sliver of almonds that I've toasted. 200 degrees, maybe 250 degrees for three or four minutes. The slivered almonds burn very quickly, so you gotta watch, because out of my three batches, I burned one yesterday. So keep an eye if they're slivered. What temperature? 250. Yeah, 250. Just for maybe, well, you have to watch five minutes. Okay, look, it's getting prettier and prettier. Look at that, it's so gorgeous. It's getting prettier and prettier. Now for the spice. Now, everybody that knows me knows I don't like spicy food, but um, we need something in here. We need some oops. Crushed red pepper flakes. I just sprinkle a little, so every bite doesn't have red pepper, So, because that would turn me off. But... sprinkling like for this amount now the recipe you get um is half this amount i doubled the recipe today to let you know so you'll know wait let me sprinkle it and then i'll hold it up so you'll know how many how much you have to make the food whoever yeah it gives it a little zing and it's really good if sally was making this there'd be a lot more in right I put in the 21 salute seasoning from mm, do you? Trader Joe's. Okay. Yes. Yeah, this, this has a nice kick to it, and I don't really even mind it. Okay. So that gives you a zing. So as I said, so you know, amount. this is double what you're going to um, get on your recipe, or I have it back there. You'll be able to see. Okay. And the last thing is dressings. So when I started whole food plant-based, I was always looking for the special, most wonderful, perfect dressing. And I have several back there but these days you know what i just like a little drizzle of lemon and i'm fine with that so we're going to drizzle just a little freshly squeezed lemon now if you're and i've made this several times <laughs> to try it out in different ways um, if you're going to do lemon juice just drizzle it can stay on and then put the salad in the fridge for a few days. But if you're going to do a heavier dressing, your own salad dressing that you like, I would wait and dress it right before you eat it. But surprisingly enough, um, this lemon juice is okay. I can use um, spinach as the green. And um, I thought spinach after three days is gonna welt and it's gonna be it didn't but spinach held up just don't make sure make sure you don't have too much too much of a dressing on it so yeah there there we go there we are and there are little cups back there that you can take home to try anybody have any questions oh let me tell you one thing about far far that i found out it needs three cups liquids whether you this is this was all these two whether you, this is a quick cooking one, whether you get it at Aldi's and this is a quick cooking one, 10 minutes, um, or 
my flora came from the pulp food section of East End Food Co-op, and I'll rinse and drain your grains first. Um, it's a three to one ratio, three liquid to one cup of flour. And with one cup cooked, one cup of dry equals about two, two and a quarter cups cooked. So that gives you an idea. I put it up on the PowerPoint, which you all will get on Zoom tomorrow, but I put the chart with the grains. It's, it's small, so you might not see it, but yeah, they do have far like I added a gluten free just for those who need gluten free, but it does say one cup grain, two cups or far, far, three cups water. Yeah. Yeah, it's a one to three water to. And it's become more popular. You can get it at Giant Eagle, yeah. uh, Aldi's. Um, I've seen it at uh, pretty much Trader Joe's anywhere. It's, it's really good. So it absorbs all the water? Mm -hmm. I've had to drain a little bit out, not much. That's another thing I should mention. You don't want it soupy. You want it so it's, you know, separate. They can separate. You don't want to be able to pour it. You know, it's, it should be. You might, it depends. Yeah, it depends. If you cook it on top of the stove, if you cook it on the Instapot. I found the Instapot, there was a, more liquid in it that I had to definitely drain the farro. But when I did it on top of my stove, I didn't. So who knows why, you know, one of those cooking questions. <laughs> we'll never know the answer. But um, I recommend this highly. Hope you enjoy the sample. And Brittany. Yeah, so today I, I'm going to share with you guys um, three different sauces, because I think you know, when you figure out how to be whole food plant-based, like sauces are the big thing for how you're going to flavor stuff, just like dressing. So um, I picked three of my favorite. We're going to do a pesto, a tomato sauce, and then also a nacho cheese sauce. So kind of all across the board. And you're going to see how easy it is to do because I'm going to do all three of them like really fast. So you just need a blender. It doesn't have to be anything special. Um, I have a Vitamix, but you know, you can use whatever you have at home. I'm gonna do the pesto first. Um, in the recipes you guys get, there's two different versions, one with nuts and one with white beans. It just depends on what you want. Uh, I always tell people that it really depends on like what your goals are, who you're feeding. If you have kids at home that are, don't have allergies, doing a nut option is great because it's getting in higher density foods. If you're watching your fat intake, the white beans is a good choice because it's lower calories. Um, if you're serving somebody who's not plant-based, you might want to try the nut version first because it's a little richer. So you can kind of play around and see what you like. Um, they're very similar though. So I have some basil here or basil, however you pronounce it. <laughs> and mine is, um, I just brought it. So I usually just, you can put the stems in and everything because the Vitamix is really good, but you could chop it if you're at home. Usually the whole amount goes in. This is nice in the summer when you have fresh basil too that you can have at home and make. And I'm gonna do the white bean version for this because the nacho cheese sauce we're gonna make with nuts. So you can see a variety of something with white beans and something with nuts. Um, but it's half a cup of white beans. And I just use canned beans. Uh, you can find a lot of no salt added canned beans at the grocery store. I do solely pretty much shop at East End Food Co-op. I live in Plum, so it's about a 20, 25 minute drive down if you don't hit all the bridge issues right now with it being down there. Um, but traffic actually hasn't been too bad going that way. I was surprised. Um, but they have great no salt added as well as Whole Foods does. And um, I think Giant Eagle has it now too. So you can find, you just have to read the labels, which I'm sure all of you guys know. So around a half a cup. When you're doing this for a while, you can really eyeball it, which is great. I have um, some lemon juice as well. So I kind of pre-measured a lot of this out at home. So I have some lemon juice, garlic cloves, white miso, nutritional yeast, and some water, right? So since we don't have a fancy kitchen here, I kind of pre, that's all in there. Um, the miso is our salt substitute. So uh, I like to use it when we cook because uh, when I came to whole food plant-based, blood pressure was an issue of mine. And so I, out of the research, 
from Dr. Greger from nutritionpack.org. He talks about how it doesn't affect your blood pressure. So a little bit, I'm not saying I don't eat spoonfuls of miso on the regular. I'm sure that would mess up your blood pressure if you're eating tons of it. But a little bit really does give you that umami saltiness that I think when people try to go salt-free, they kind of miss or, or it doesn't taste, taste too bland. So this is a nice transition to, or if you're serving your family. So I'm just gonna kind of clean out the extra that was in there. Um, so if you're making it with white beans, that's fine. If you're making it traditionally, you can use pine nuts. So either or, that's it for this. Super easy. I, I did drain them earlier. But since we don't have a, yeah, you can drain it if you wanna, if you're like in a rush and you don't have enough water, you can use some of the liquid. Some people are more sensitive to the liquid in the can or called aquafaba. It just depends on your gut and how long you've been doing this. I feel like I'm pretty much a, doesn't matter either way for me now with, uh, you know, increasing your fiber and gas issues you may have. But if you're starting and noticing it irritates you, you can always definitely rinse them well. And some people like to cook them from scratch. And so um, either way. Okay, we're gonna see if this, yeah. All right. So I always have a little bit of extra water too. It really depends on how wide your blender is for any sauce recipe. Some of my earlier recipes, I had a different Vitamix and it was much narrower. This is the Ascent series. It's like the newer series that has the food processor attachment for Vitamix. So it's, this one came with a wider mouth. So I've noticed like our cheese sauce, I'm gonna show you it's just doubled just to make it easier. But if you ever run into an issue where the blender is not processing, just have a little bit of water on the side and just, you know, you can thin it out and kind of, I always tell people cooking, you know, you just tweak stuff too to whatever your preference is. All right, so let's see. Let me try and switch on first. There we go, doing this upside down. You can add as much liquid or less liquid for how chunky you want pesto to be too. I'm gonna leave it a little bit on the chunky side because I think that's how I prefer it. But you just wanna make sure that garlic clove is really, mish, you know, really blended as well as the white beans or if you do pine nuts. But again, however much liquid can depend. Now you can throw pesto on pasta, on a whole grain. I do it on farro all the time, which is actually great. Yeah, right. we could use yeah. it, salad it could be a salad dressing. Mm -hmm. yeah. We do it as a pizza sauce. Um, really, you know, if you love basil, this is a great option for all of that. So it's done, so that's one. So I'm gonna put them in cups so you guys can take them with the chips home and then she's gonna present again and then we'll come back to my blender. So another part of the class was tips and tricks and I'm not sure if I have tips or tricks, but <laughs> I don't know, I'll try. Um, I found this veggie, vegan veggie powder recipe. I think Sally might have put it in our newsletter last month, but it's great because I make a lot of, I used to call them dollar soups, soup, but that didn't sound so nice. So I went to, so now I call them combo soups. If I'm cooking and I have like a half a cup of raw onion that I don't need, it gets thrown in the freezer. Last week with this tabbouleh class, I also made, they also were teaching stuffed cabbage. So I have cabbage that I didn't need. That goes in the freezer. I have broccoli, cooked broccoli, just anything that I make too much of that I don't need. I never throw it away. It goes in the freezer. So when I'm ready for a combo soup, which I'm going to be probably when we get home today, um, and it's a good way to clean out your freezer too. I usually put in, pull out my combo um, vegetables, anything that's in the freezer, add a box. And this is a good brand. Um, there's no oil added. There's another one, a box that has, read the labels that have oil in it. You don't want oil in your, in your veggie broth. So I might, with my combo soup, do this, put my vegetables in, maybe add some potatoes. If I have some sweet potatoes, I want to use up. But this is a very good vegan veggie powder mix. And the recipe's back there on my sheet, on my paper. 
but I make it, there's six or seven ingredients, onion powder, garlic powder, nutritional yeast, and on and on. And I put it in a grinder. You don't have to, you can just whisk those all together. As I say, the recipe is back there. I keep it in a jar in my fridge. You can see I'm gonna need more soon. I purchased this coffee grinder on Target a few years ago. I don't drink coffee, so I don't use it for coffee beans. I wouldn't mix. If you're a coffee drinker and you're grounded coffee beans, don't use it for both. I used it, I used it two weeks ago. I needed a half cup of oat flour. So I pulled out my rolled oats, put it in here and pulsed it and made some oat flour. Um, and you wash this up. This can't be washed, but it's, you I get a damp cloth and wipe it out. I've also used it to process um, a small quantity of nuts in here. So it comes in pretty handy. So I put my um, veggie powder mix in here, pulsed it, and then it went in the jar in the fridge for my combo soup. And really, we love it. It's really good. So if you're short on time, you just a little broth, a little few vegetables, you're good to go. Okay, that's one of the tricks. We talked about the Ezekiel wraps. Um, let's see. Cups are. Um, when I try to get organized, oh, here they are, <laughs> talking about organizing. <laughs> when I try to get organized to cook or to bake, especially during December when I was making food presents for people, um, I like to put out all my ingredients before I get started. There's kind of a French term for that, mise en place, everything in place. Because I can't tell you the number of the times I've jumped into a recipe and ah, in the middle of it, I don't have something, I have to stop and go, jump in the car and go to the store. So I love, I used to put spices, these cupcake papers for spices. It could be mixed, put them in there, then you, it's, it's clean up, you just. But I also found these little applesauce cups. A lot of whole food plant-based baking things like muffins, um, zucchini bread, carrot cake, call for unsweetened applesauce, it replaces the egg um, and it gives a lot of moisture to the to what you're making so I thought why am I throwing these out so I rinse them out and if you have two or three cloves of garlic that you don't want to put in paper because it's a wet ingredient put them in here and so I have my mise en place my everything measured out I know I have everything and I'm ready to cook so that helps you mm -hmm. oh, something else um, Oh, okay. So for, I've been doing this like seven or eight years and for probably six and a half to seven years, I never had any cold cereal and milk because I use plant milks a lot. I use them in baking all the time or cashew cream sauce. I always have plant milks, but I never liked one plain. I didn't like unsweetened soy plain. I didn't like unsweetened almond plain. You know, it's just, a, it's really a personal thing. So one time last year, I bought a carton of oat milk and it's, bland, but I thought, oh, this is kind of close to skim milk that I was used to. And I tried it with some cold cereal and it was like wonderful. But I looked on the box of the oat milk and there's like ingredients that I really wasn't thrilled about. It's a couple I couldn't even pronounce. So I thought that's not good. Then I was on the internet surfing around and this is a fairly new company. It's JOI, just one ingredient. Yeah. And it has, this is oat milk powder, but if you go on their website, they have cashew, they have almond, they have a lot of products there. But the reason I like this is that one cup of water and two tablespoons of this and you have a cup of milk. So I can't tell you how many bowls of cereal I've had, mm -hmm. cold cereal I've had, I have a happy camper with some bananas in it or whatever. I've been having cold cereal. Um, it's a little pricey, but it it's worth it to me because I know I have milk whenever I need it. Um, I needed a quarter cup milk the other day and I just could make a quarter cup milk because that's all I needed. Um, and I didn't have to worry about the milk I have in my fridge. Is it expired? Do I have enough? So I always have enough and it's ready, willing and able. So I, I like this a lot. Um, Brittany's talking about her sauces. I did bring one of my ice cube trays. I've known for my ice cube tray stories, if you're new, if you make a sauce, a marinara sauce, a pizza sauce, a pesto sauce, um, I put them in an ice cube tray, um, put it in the freezer, 
and then when it's frozen, pop them out and put them in a container. And then you have as much as you want. If you only are cooking for one person or two people and you want a marinara sauce over your pasta, you don't have to open up a whole jar and then put the jar in the fridge and not use the rest of it. So the ice cube trays, I must have 15 different ice cube trays that I use. Um, also lemon juice, a lot of whole food plant-based recipes need lemon juice. So I squeeze a lot of fresh lemon. Now the lemon juice, I, I measure out because a lot of the recipes are specific, one tablespoon, two tablespoons. So I do measure the lemon juice out into the ice cube trays. But the other, the marinara, the pesto, um, I don't measure out, I just fill up the cubes. And then, then I can grab it, you know. I've done that with the cheese sauce when the kids, the grandkids come over and they want mac and cheese. One of the pasta, pull out my cheese cubes, and you know, I have ready to go mac and cheese. So um, the ice cube trays are a, a handy thing to have. And so that's all my tricks or my tips. And I hope it helps. Okay, so we'll make some marinara sauce now. So you would clean out your blender if you had a proper kitchen. We're kind of going with it today, but we're going to be green in it. Um, so the marinara sauce is really easy. Uh, we're going to use just, I just like to buy this one that's on sale. Um, a lot of the grocery stores around here carry it. It's strained tomatoes. The whole entire thing goes in for one batch, so it's really easy. So I don't have to like measure out anything. Um, in the recipe, of course, I have measurements, but you could use a can of diced tomatoes. You could use fresh tomatoes if it's summer. I kind of go with whatever is in season. Um, I was able to open that with gloves. <laughs> so the whole thing goes in, which is really lovely. And then you can reuse the, the jar for something else. because It's a glass jar, so, or recycle. This is just like super fast. You don't have to worry about going to the grocery store because a lot of the pasta sauces, um, marinara sauces or pizza sauces have oil and tons of stuff in them. You're just like, ah. So this is a really quick one. And then here I have everything else, but it's one pitted date. That's for sweetness to kind of cut the acidity. Uh, and here I have two tablespoons of nutritional yeast, two tablespoons of Italian seasoning, or you could do pizza seasoning, which is the spice blend, and then one teaspoon of white miso. So like stuff you probably already have at home, minus the white miso if that's new to you, but um, everything else is in there. I just found pizza seasoning at Giant Eagle in the spice section. Yeah. I was so surprised. A big jar of it. It's called pizza seasoning. So easy just to have a blend like that and add it. And then it makes a beautiful like rosé color. I don't know how it's going to do with a little bit of green in it from this, but um, you know, if you don't, some people want a really dark uh you know red color so you could um not use you know use something that's the nutritional yeast really does like lighten the color you could leave that out if you really care about it being a dark color i think it's a pretty pink but um you know let's see Just taking a second to blend until that date is pulverized. That's pretty much what I'm looking for. And then if you have a Vitamix, you could heat it in here because mm -hmm. um, it does that option, or you could pour it into a saucepan and just heat it that way. But there's pizza sauce or pasta, you know, marinara is done. And uh, we use it all the time. So this is just, you know, you can freeze it. You can freeze any of the sauces I'm going to show you today, but super easy. I'll pour it out. Question for you. Where do you get some of these So um, I used to order mine on Amazon, but the pandemic kind of ruined that because then it was coming like spoiled. The price of it yeah. went crazy up. Um, so, and they weren't giving me a refund when it was coming broken. And mm -hmm. so I decided not to do that anymore. Um, but the East End Food Co-op has white miso. It's just in a little, I think the tub is purple. I should have brought it today. But um, I just buy that. And I just make sure it's a soy miso because that's the one that's shown the benefits. Mm -hmm. But it's a round container. Like that, it's a round container yeah. Yep. And they sell it at Whole Foods yeah. and a couple other places now. It's becoming more popular. And I think you use very little at a time. Yeah. 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 I think a tub is like $10, but I recipe test like all the time with it. And it takes me months to get through it. Yeah, exactly. So like an average person who's not 
trying to come up with recipes, but it would last even longer. And it stays good for a long time because it's fermented. So we just keep it in the refrigerator. Um, so you can see it makes a beautiful. I use sauce. a liquid me show that I get that has different and I again it's kind of pricey, but it lasts. I'll put it in the one the email tomorrow. Where do you get that? I got it online, like okay. everything else. It, yeah, it's you can use yeah. it at like for stir fry or to brush. Um, and um, and just can't, you know, whatever you, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll put it, I'll show you, I'll put it in. If you do make ice cubes, remember I did this once, I had marinara, I had a pizza sauce, I had another red sauce, and I didn't label them. So I, I had three bags of red cubes <laughs> to make sure you write on the container what it is. Okay, then we're going to do nacho sauce. So, like, you literally can make these, freeze them, have them available for whenever you want. They last around, I would say five to seven days in your refrigerator. I guess I actually pour a lot of them in a mason jar with a plastic lid and keep them in the refrigerator. Um, that's really easy. Or you could reuse, you know, the container that this is perfect to reuse. All right, so this last one is one that's also good on everything. We make potato nachos, the Super Bowl is tomorrow. So this could be a great idea, you know, when you're watching the commercials, because everyone, you know, the Steelers aren't in it. So, um, you know, we make we make potato nachos. You can buy the chips that uh, we talked about with the wraps and make nachos that way for more of a chip nacho. We put this on pizza. I'm trying to think of all the other ways you, you can put it on pasta for a different. You can put it on a whole grain. So really, it's versatile. I call it nacho cheese sauce because there's a little bit of a secret ingredient that gives it a little bit more of a bite than like another cheese cheese sauce recipe might try. Now on my YouTube channel, I do have um, a butternut squash cheese sauce, which is a sweeter version. So there's a this has a little bit more of a tang to it because there's rice vinegar in it. But you could make a if you're looking for something milder and sweeter, you could try that. So, all right. So I have one cup of raw cashews, or I also have. Um, one cup of cooked white beans. You can use either or. Let me make sure I have. You know, I think I, did I forget my cashews? All right, these are gonna, oh no. Yeah, I forgot my cashews at home. So we're gonna use white beans. So that's nice because I still have the left over. But, so everyone's getting white beans today. There's no nuts. So that works if you have a nut allergy. But usually my husband always requests us to do this with cashews because it's a little bit of a richer. Could you throw your pine nuts in? You could, but cashews are a little Sorry. bit of a milder nut to use. So that's why a lot of people use it. But good thing I had that. So that works. Um, up in here, I have a lot of the liquid. So I have one cup of water. I have six tablespoons of nutritional yeast, uh, two teaspoons of miso, some rice vinegar, two teaspoons of rice vinegar, and then I have some seasonings we're gonna add. So I did measure this out before I came. So this isn't a big reusable. I was trying to think what would make the less amount of mess showcasing it to you guys. That wasn't bad. <laughs> All right, and then the secret ingredient is a roasted red bell pepper. So these are um, oil-free roasted red bell peppers that I find at the grocery store. Um, the only thing about buying these is sometimes they spoil and get mold really fast. So after I take out my roasted red pepper, I fill it back up with water. So at least it's covered. I found that that makes it last a lot longer. Because really, I was only using them for this specific recipe. And I'm not making it like every day. So when I go back to grab it, I'd be really bummed out if there was mold on top of it. Because, you know, these do get a little bit, I think it's like 6 to $7 a jar. We're only using two pieces for this one but i do the same thing Brittany, and also i freeze because i love them yeah you can rinse it. them off and then put it like it the freezer nice queen time. says over there uh-huh might not be able to open this but what i usually do is i put a little you know i do a vinegar or apple cider vinegar on top and it's tight and it doesn't really yeah you can very much it's already fermented ah she got it all right, so this is brand new because I didn't want to, didn't want to uh, grab one we had in the fridge. But I just, you know, 
everyone asks me like, what size do you use? It all personal preference. The more you use, the more red pepper, roasted red bell pepper it tastes. It's gonna oh, feel. So but maybe like two large ones. It just depends. Those look pretty good. Um, but like, I would just fill this up with water and stick it back in our refrigerator so it stays good. That's a tip of me messing it up many, many times and getting frustrated. All right, and then for seasonings, I have some smoked paprika. Mm. Um, if you don't like smoked paprika, you can leave it out. I like it. Some people say I use it a lot in the recipes, but I literally make the recipes that we eat at home and enjoy. And then I tell everyone you can make it how you like. So a little bit of smoke. And it, it's nice because there's roasted red bell pepper in it. So it really complements it, I, I feel. And it makes it really a pretty cheese colored um, nacho cheese sauce. And then there's some just some garlic and onion powder, which I might have forgot as well. Apparently when I was leaving today, I left all of my spices, but um, it'll still be good, I promise. Or maybe I added it into that bag. I'm trying to remember what I did when I was leaving. <laughs> it might have been in the bag. <laughs> So because we have like tomato sauce in here and then, so the color is very orange when you make it at home. And then if you add the nuts, it's a much thicker sauce. Um, so just that's the only difference. So when we close, I'll have you guys come up and you can try have all three if you want, or if you just want to try whichever one, we'll put it in a container to go. But since you guys are, um, I figured we'll have you come up and do it instead of me making them all out in case you don't want a certain one. But that's it. I mean, it's so easy that you literally, can figure out the sauces and dressings you want. You try out whole grains, try out different beans, try out different vegetables, figure out what you like. And I just try to make sure I'm getting a diverse amount. So if I make farro one week, um, you know, one day I might make quinoa the next day, I might try to do um, some other grain I've never tried. If you go to Giant Eagle around here, the international section or the, you know, where you get your rice, they have so many different grains. That's kind of how I found out about farro and teff and all the other ones that you can you can try out to see what you like. But yeah, it's very, very easy. Once you get the hang of it. Yeah. Brittany, I didn't mention your membership club. Do you want to tell about your membership? Oh, membership that you have? Uh, that's okay. I mean, I, I have hundreds of recipes online if you're interested. Lots of them are sauce recipes. We're putting up one tonight, which is going to be a chickpea piccata for Valentine's Day coming up, <laughs> um, which this is a side note. And um, I found this product. I was searching for a healthy breadcrumb and I used to get a certain breadcrumb from Whole Foods. That was whole wheat. It was like two ingredients, but they had stopped selling it because of the pandemic. I think just shipping issues probably. And so I was trying to find one in breadcrumbs. If you don't make them at home, usually have a bunch of stuff in them, like very, very hard to find stuff that's one or two ingredient. So I came across these and they're on Amazon and I bought, I actually bought them from their actual website, but they're literally just, this one's carrot, potato, and turmeric. That's so if, it. yeah, if you're gluten-free or if you, you know, so that was really fun. You can um, come up and see them. This one I did for Valentine's day is beet and potatoes. So it's pink <laughs> or red. I thought that was cute. And they have a purple one, which is just purple potato or purple carrots and uh, potatoes. So. Um, Vegify. I'll add it to the email too. Yeah. I already have a picture of it. So yeah, yeah, it worked great. They crisped up. So if you need a breading or a breadcrumb or, you know, I think these could be really fun for Easter coming up or the holidays. So, um, you know, you just use it as you would breadcrumbs and it'll last probably forever because um, it's a lot that comes. Yeah, that was a little tip that I just, just discovered myself. But yeah. So a couple more things we're going to add just in the PowerPoint that you'll get and people in person will get some handouts if they want. Um, just some, we had talked about flexibility and, and, you know, these two women showed, thank you, how flexible. Oh, we don't have that. Okay, we'll add this. Just the flexibility. But also, this is a great um, chart from Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine where it shows you, well, what can I do if I don't have some common substitutions, especially if you are, um, you know, want to change a regular 
<laughs> recipe and make it into a plant-based recipe, um, this is what you can do. And you can, it's free online. You'll get the link there when you get the email tomorrow. And I really like this because I did not know this from all recipes. I just took out, some of these were really helpful for me is to look at, I never knew what arrowroot starch because I never had it. I don't even know, but oh, you can use this or that. So you're gonna get that also um, to make it to, to if you're working at a recipe and you always say, oh, I don't have this, I don't have whatever. And there's a second half of that. And you're going to see an example, Susan Greenberg's come up in a moment, just for those that you'll get the recipe, but like a, a recipe for these muffins called for um, yogurt. And Susan, you said you just put milk, plant-based milk and an apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar. And it's like, oh. It's sort of like a butter milk, except that I made it a little extra thicker. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Not from natural, but <laughs> a little thicker than, than uh, just regular butter. Yeah. So you're going to get a recipe for um, these lemon blueberry muffins. And I made them and I ran out and got an expensive big container of coconut, unsweetened coconut yogurt, because it's the only one I could find. There was one left in the grocery store. Um, but who knew I, I could have just used and never even thought of it. But the recipe that you're going to get, it's a vegan recipe, and it will show you how um, both Susan and I made it, but how we substituted. Okay. And um, another thing, just if you're talking about tips and what's useful, is I always remember, you know, I guess it's been at least eight years when I went and heard Jeff Novick give his workshop on a 10 minute meals. And it was, to me, it was like transformational. Oh, oh, five ingredients, you know, and he demonstrated and I use this all the time when I teach, when I work in my head, <laughs> it's everything and um, mix and match. So these are four of his recipes that I'll include in the email tomorrow, but it, it is, it's, it's just a way of thinking. You can make it simple to your taste and that's key so that you can, you want it convenient for you, but you want it enjoyable, you want it tasty, you know, can work in your lifestyle. Okay. The other point I wanted to make is if you go on the plant-based Pittsburgh website. I don't know if, if everyone realizes that. I just took a screenshot here that there are, we have so many recipes from past presentations. If you click on it, we'll show you the whole page. If you go down and you click on it, you'll pull up the PDF with the recipes that are listed beside each one, each of the topics there. And we have this cookbook we did in 2018, I think. Or we had some recipes and you can just, you know, again, pull up the PDF of that one. Um, so we keep adding and adding. So certainly use that. And I have cards, people in person that don't, aren't sure, just get the plantbasedpittsburgh.com um, and our business cards. But I also want to mention some of the sources that Linda resources, the, the reputable resources that Linda mentioned at the beginning, you know, nutrition facts, SLT, go on to our plant-based resources page, click that on, you can see it in the header there, and it lists, you know, those exact people and organizations that she mentioned, some basic cookbooks, some meal planning, include the Derudi family, of course, and Facebook. So it has some resources there that, um, especially for those that are new or newer to it. And then before we get to our sharing and questions, I wanted to mention, this is exciting. Well, for some of us, it might be exciting for you too. <laughs> we don't know. But we're doing our first round of complete 
Health Improvement Program. It's it's a we're actually an international program. It's called CHIP. C H I P is the abbreviation, and it is a lifestyle program that really looks at integrating a whole switch from not just food but sleep, stress, um, movement into and it's over 10 weeks. So it's a really thorough program. And this is, we're offering for the first time, the first round next month. Um, and Plant-Based Pittsburgh is coordinating this. So if you are interested, Monday, February 14th, that's coming up, Valentine's Day. There is going to be Dr. Natalie Gentili we have two um, facilitators, Dr. Natalie Gentili, who some, some of you already know who's wonderful, and then Nedra um, Hazel, who is supposed to be here, but she's unfortunately not here today. She's a nurse practitioner. So they're going to facilitate the sessions, and it's, um, but Dr. Gentili is going to give this informational session. So if you, if you're out for romantic dinner on Monday and you know you won't be home in time for the seven o'clock webinar. That's okay. Just sign up as with everything else you, you know, that we tend to do here. You'll get the information. We get the link, you'll get whatever. And this first round, um, we're fortunate to have the donation to Plant-Based Pittsburgh since we are a nonprofit. We can add some financial incentives to mm -hmm. this to see how it goes and we're, we're limiting it we are limited it's just small group but um i wanted to if you know somebody who you think might be interested this might be their chance to take advantage of this and it doesn't have to be just pittsburgh residents because this is a virtual program it's going to be do some of your own but it's also going to be a group that is working on zoom okay so Let's stop there and let us go with questions. And, and maybe, Brittany, you can look and see if there's questions yep. there. And anybody in the group sitting here, did you have tips or questions that on the cards that you want to share that I'll share for you even? <laughs> Is that not or not? Huh? <laughs> Okay. Sure. Usually it sh it's sh like sheds, like if there's like a germ to it that kind of like breaks apart whenever it whenever you make wild rice. Um, so it should kind of look like it kind of. I've never had it. Yeah. Never had it come into a ball. Usually it looks like it like has shredded into like three pieces. Oh, okay. Um, what does it say? Wild rice, three, one cup wild rice, three cups. Do you use that relation? I don't remember. I think we just looked it up online. We were together and uh, last time. 45 day. minutes yield. I'm going to tell you what I do. 45 minutes? Okay. You'll, you'll yeah, get this. You'll get yeah. this. That's a longer, yeah. That wild okay. rice is a longer cooking time. All right, it's up there. I'll give that a shot. I'm going to go for, we could, yeah, we don't even need this. I should just because it, it glares. I know. Don't forget we have Susan and the muffins. Too. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Don't oh, my gosh. Yes. yes. I yes. said that and then I didn't even. Uh, well, it's not a big deal. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, yes it is. They are yes. so good. <laughs> muffins, they are good. Well, unfortunately, since we don't have an oven, um, there would be no way for us to actually review this. I see they can see what they are. Let me move over. Yeah, I'm going to unplug this. And yeah, there's muffins in the back to take them to. Okay. okay. Yes. All our samples are in the back. Um, and you will be getting the recipe. Um, I made little mini muffins, and sometimes it's a little tricky to get the timing right, but I did 13 minutes and they worked out very well. It's a very, very simple recipe. Um, the only ingredient, as Sally mentioned, that um, I didn't have and wasn't about to just run out and get was the yogurt. So I did, and it, the recipe calls for half a cup of soy milk or plant milk and a half a cup of yogurt. I just did a full cup of soy milk 
and added two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar mm -hmm. and just let it sit. I stirred it maybe once or twice mm -hmm. and it came out thick enough. And of course, I'm a, I experiment in the kitchen. So I figured, well, you know, if it doesn't work, but it's fine. It worked out pretty well. Um, the recipe calls for two and a quarter cups of flour. Uh, I think originally the recipe was for all whole wheat. I changed it to one cup of whole wheat and one and a quarter cups of whole wheat um, pastry flour. And that's a, that's a much finer grain. And uh, it does call for, um, it's no unusual ingredients in it. Um, what really makes this recipe wonderful, besides the blueberries, which I could eat in my sleep, um, is the lemon. It's, you, um, I have a microplane, you plane the, um, or shred the, the, um, the for the, 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 the zest. Yeah. And, uh, and do that before you cut the lemon in half and then squeeze the fresh lemon. It's usually about a quarter of a cup for a good sized lemon. So that's what the recipe calls for. Mm -hmm. And that just opening the container, you can smell the lemon so beautifully. So it's, it's a very nice um, multi-sensory kind of little muffin. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm trying to think of other ingredients that might be different. I, it calls for, I reduce, when you get the, the recipe, the sugar just called for plain sugar. Right. Um, so I always reduce the sugar because things tend to go too sweet for me. And I replace date sugar mm -hmm. with what they, and I always take the shortcuts. Anybody that knows me, I, the lemon, the, I just throw, I'm not good at precise me me measurement. <laughs> yes, I do. I just throw the uh, actually a piece of lemon in the Vitamix or big blender with my wet ingredients and yeah. you know, and it's always I, easy yeah. for me. And I didn't use a, a blender. I just I just stirred it myself. Um, it does call for um, there's one more ingredient. Oh, the sugar that I use was date sugar. Um, I only used it because um, it was in the recipe as a substitution for plain white sugar. There are other sugars you can use. Date sugar is really expensive. I didn't realize how much how expensive it was until I realized that for three quarters of a cup of date sugar in this little package, it I think it costs about eight or nine dollars just for the bag. Mm -hmm. So there are other sugars you can use. Uh, I was thinking of date paste, which I make myself, and or you can buy date paste, and um, you just might have to um, reduce the moisture in whatever else you're adding, or add a little bit extra flour. And that would make a difference. We should talk um, about making date paste. Well, and I basic? freeze that yeah. too. You know, yeah. I, I'm in Linda's category. I make a batch of date paste. It's a one-to-one -one relation mm -hmm. ratio of water to dates. And I, I cut the dates in half or- And you can use any parts. dried fruit. It doesn't have to be dates, be raisins. You can make raisin paste. If you have, I mean, it changes right. the flavor, apricots, um, dried cherries. You know, that's a great tip if you want to use up what you have or, um, right. and I have a video on it. If you Google Drudy <laughs> date, it'll pop up and it'll if you're gonna, can watch if you're me make it. Dates, which I do buy a large quantity of them and freeze them, pit them first. The first yeah, if they're I not did, pitted already. I froze them not pitted. <laughs> And then I had to pull out. They do clump together, but that's fine because they break apart. But pit them mm -hmm. first, then put them in the freezer, and then you just pull out what you need. And I didn't pit them the first time. And I'm so sorry. Jewel dates are also um, kind of the best if you can find them because they're a little bit fatter and, and gooier than yeah. um, some other but ones. I'm, I'm lazy. I buy them pitted. Yeah. Or you could be I'm even lazier. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I buy them the press dates. Oh, yeah, that's that's right. Right. oh, oh, oh. That's what next time I make those muffins, I'm going to put it. It's in a press date. I get it at Peter Land. And so if you have a Mediterranean store, um, oh, um, Patel said that that's, they didn't have it when I was there, but they yeah. said they do carry it at times. It's just, um, Dates that are pressed together very good, and you just, you know, sort of just chunk nice. it off. Mm -hmm. It's hard to be exact, but <laughs> I don't care, as you know by now. I don't care. But I've got to go back to the rice. Okay. Yes. This is, and I got this from Jeff Novick when I was at this workshop in Florida years ago with him. 
it is, he calls it his foolproof rice, and I use mm -hmm. it all the time, mm -hmm. is you put rice in the pot and then fill up the whole pot as if you're cooking pasta, you know, it, it's, mm -hmm. and then of course, it's also if you're concerned about the arsenic and all that, you know, less concern there. Cook it for 30 minutes with lid off. So a low boil with the lid off, okay? Take it off, drain it um, after 30 minutes, then put the rice back in the pot, put the lid on and put it not on the heat, but just put it to the side for at least 10 minutes mm -hmm. and that fluffs it up. Oh, yep. That's the more different recipe. He oh. says that's the one when he talks about even cooking all grain um, and even beans. Um, you always, and I think he said on sellers about an inch more of water in the pot above the rice, for example. And uh, and that's the same principle. Okay. And I also have a gadget called a wonder bag, which is pretty cool, um, where you just bring whatever grain to a boil and then you take it off and stick it in the wonder bag and you close it up <laughs> and um, you can leave your house. And like, by the time you come back, you take it out and everything's cooked. So mm -hmm. that's a great like camping, um, we do it a lot, like when we want to go leave the house, you know, it's the safe, safe thing, but it's, um, if you Google wonder bag, they're pretty cool to check out. Yeah, that's why we love Brittany. You know what? We should do a, um, yeah, a camping, um, this summer. We yeah. should do a camping. Actually, if anyone camping. wants to come camping, <laughs> yeah. I'm hosting a camping trip. That's, um, like two hours from here, uh -huh. um, at the Rocky gap. So a lot of the camping spots, if you're not attend, you know, a lot of the camping spots are booked up, but there's a hotel um, on the campground. So some people are staying at the casino hotel and then there's a five mile hike that's flat all around this lake. And so there's like, I think there's like 30 to 40 people signed up right now. We're all going to camp and make whole food plant-based recipes oh, together. And it's just a weekend. So last weekend in uh, July. That sounds good. Cool. I'd like to add that I cook rice frequently. I use the Lundberg varieties of rice, and I have found that the rice is done far sooner than the recipe calls for. Mm. It says 35 to 40 minutes. I have found that even at 25 minutes, and I taste, it tastes perfectly done to me. So um, be aware of that. So that might have happened with your um, wild rice. The yeah. wild rice is really quite different from more traditional. Yeah. I thought it was just me, but yes, every time I cook rice, it, it says 20 minutes. I mm -hmm. set the timer for. Like I think it also minutes. depends if you have gas or electric. I have electric. So do I. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's harder to control for me, you know, to get a low simmer. Yeah, well, my stove is another story. Yeah. <laughs> so gas is easier. Not, that's true. That is gas true. is easier to control. I don't, I don't have that luxury. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions? Can do a question part or comments. Yeah. I start low, start really low because it's, I mean, you can always get, add more. You don't want to make stuff too salty, but um, usually like half of a, maybe one fourth of a teaspoon to start. And then you can build, just kind of depends. Um, and you can do it to taste, but. Yeah. I've been trying to substitute that for salt. So yeah and you can always mix a little bit with water and make dilute it into more of a liquid so if you're going to add it to like a green that's a great idea just do like one fourth of a teaspoon mix with um a little bit of water so it's you know not paste but a little bit thinner mm -hmm. but yeah always start start lower i think i taste the salt has been shaped by um um produced um highly manufactured products and um, it, it takes a while mm -hmm. until you get yourself away from what, you know, what's on a pretzel. I mean, I was a pretzel lover for years. Mm -hmm. And now eating a pretzel would be overkill to me. Yeah. I can't do that anymore. I so take the I, it takes off. a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Same with the sugar. I find, and I have a sweet tooth. Every tooth in my mouth is a sweet tooth. <laughs> but I find some things are just too sweet now for me, commercial yep. things yep. that I try. So I still like my sweets, my dates. <laughs> Um, less, you're right. Less, yeah. your taste buds, yeah, and then you can tweak your it. Taste buds do adjust. I mean, it might take two two weeks or so until, but if they really do adjust, and I find that flavors taste better to me now. The dishes that I make taste better. It's like I have a yeah a more heightened sense of taste now oh, that yeah. I'm not 
bombarded with you're not protein. diluting it with the oils the right. sugars the salts the mm -hmm. sauces yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not just my cooking when i taste what you make and what you make it yeah. tastes so good mm -hmm. so. the other thing is that i i make an apple pie and a blueberry pie with no added sugar yes it is possible <laughs> um i started making it and our we have three sons all three have learned how to bake and they're not exactly youngsters anymore but they are so used to eating at least those particular pies without added sugar that when they eat a commercial or when somebody brings a pie mm -hmm. to a party they find it way too sweet because they're just not used to it but apples and i use granny smith apples i used to add raisins because i was afraid that you know you needed a little extra sugar but i found that just mm -hmm. using the apples or the blueberries and blueberries my goodness more than enough sugar in it so it's it's what you get used to mm -hmm. and um i've been doing that for years and i've never heard anybody recommend that you not use sugar in a pie it works maybe we'll do a pie and pie should. and cake class <laughs> mm -hmm. i'm in uh -huh. pie and cake class <laughs> yeah pastries galore yes go ahead. Uh, a recommendation for a gluten-free flour that that's a favorite or works well because I oh flour oh, you can flour. get gluten-free oat flour yeah that's I a think good any one. of the grains if you not any but I should say that like no yeah yeah, yeah never mind that okay. but many of the grains like the sorghum um, I think icorn sometimes can be okay if you have yeah. to check that one I mean, if you truly to, have celiac I have a friend whose son has celiac and she has to watch yeah I mean a toast crumb a crumb from a piece of toast would send him to the hospital. So if you have celiac disease, that's a whole different story. But if you just want to stay away from gluten for whatever, or you have a sensitivity, then I would just make sure it's yeah. certified gluten-free on the bag. Um, some people say you can just use rolled oats and grind them up and make flour. If I was gluten-free, I'd be a little bit nervous about that because of cross-contamination, but um, it depends what your situation is. Yeah, you can get like specific yeah, ones that are, specific yeah. yeah. Right. But oats can be gluten -free. They can be, yeah. Yes, I buy a gluten free oh. oat um, spread mill or whatever. Oh, yes, yeah. right. Yeah. Right. So you can grind yeah. it up. You can grind yeah. the oats up and make a flour. Uh, yeah, depends on what you're making. Yeah, yeah. to make a flour. Well, we always buy, we, he makes a smoothie or whatever you call it, a shake every morning with blue, frozen blueberries. And we always, that's part of the reason we belong to Sam's to buy this big, nice <laughs> Sam's. We always $8 something. We just went this weekend and it was $10 something. Yeah. We talk on the news. I haven't really seen the prices went up, but that was a big jump. Yeah, I know. We still bought them. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, I mean, it's still, so right. we go to Costco and the same thing. Yeah, we went to the co op and it was more. Prices all of a sudden. I'm just more. noticing that now that it's the news. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's, it's, it's the fact that, um, Transporting products. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. They're stuck in Canada. They are. It's like, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, well, don't try to get a car, but the, the co op has blueberries on sale this week. Well, so does Olga. <laughs> but I don't think I buy in season when I, I shop at Aldi's a lot. I really like the quality of their produce. And I will buy a flat of blueberries, sometimes even more. It depends on the price and freeze it. Yeah. And then as I need it, as I with the little muffins this time, I just go to my freezer and just take out a little a little pint container. Yeah. Use what I need and then put it back in the freezer. And I love blueberry muffins. I'm mean, blueberry uh, pancakes. Mm -hmm. That's one of our favorite dinners. <laughs> That's so in great. season, if you can buy things in season, uh, I happen to have a big freezer, but even in a small, regular refrigerator freezer, you can you can be careful about you know what you what you choose to freeze, uh, what you can freeze. But in season is the best time to get the best price. Any other questions or any online questions? I should ask. Does anyone have any questions on on Zoom? We got comments of only mailed out samples. <laughs> you got to come on. Yeah. Come on, folks. Come on Make the move. Some people here, I realize, aren't too far away. I saw some names. <laughs> <laughs> yes. One of Major's friends from Cincinnati made it. Oh, cool. Very good. Any questions? Seems like no question, so.
Okay. Well, if there are no questions and more, we're going well, to I'm taste test. Oh, we have to start filling your little cups. Yeah, I'm gonna have people come up. Yeah, we're they gonna can say which yes. one. So, all right. Well, and those Zoom. who are zooming, bye. It was nice. You'll hear from me tomorrow. Okay. Everyone else, now it becomes the fun right. time. Okay. Bye, guys.